Jim, we now understand here the numbers, as I said, tragically have been going higher. 73 now dead uh, in this in this terror attack. I'm, I'm obviously we're not formally using the word terror yet. Certainly it was terror by any measure of the definition of what the term means. Uh, but in terms of the motive, I know we do not yet know at this point. Um, authorities are, though, clearly using that word attack. What more are they able to to figure out, Jim, from what happened here in terms of the motive? They're, they're not concluding anything yet, but, but, but let's look at precedent here, Aaron. For, first of all, a, a truck is a deadly weapon. A car is a deadly weapon. And we know that Islamist groups have encouraged their followers to use cars and trucks as deadly weapons. You had the ISIS spokesman, Al Adnadi, saying recently, run them over, in his words. And we've seen attacks like this. We've seen them in Canada. We've seen them in Israel. And in fact, we've seen them in France before, several times before, but, but not to this degree, not with this level uh, of carnage. Obviously, there's a bigger vehicle, a truck, in a, in nearly a tractor trailer size, immense crowds packed together there, uh, making it an even more deadly weapon uh, than it would be. Whether this is Islamist or terrorist, uh, it, it appears very much to be intentional. So, an act of mass murder at a minimum. All right, Jim's going to uh, stay with us, and, and I do want everyone to understand here the death toll now going up to 73. Uh, 32 people were massacred in Brussels, 130 in Paris. This is now 73 people uh, in this attack, uh, at least 100 injured, um, 73 dead, dead now formally, according to French television. Tony Molina is an American from San Diego. He was there. He saw this happen, and he joins me on the phone. Tony, um, uh, we are very glad that you are all right, that you are, are here and able to talk about this. Can you tell me what you saw? Sure. Um, basically, they, they had a large fireworks show tonight. Um, we overlook an area of the beach uh, where there was a lot of people sitting to watch the show. We were watching it ourselves. And uh, when it ended, uh, the streets were just flooded, basically. Um, there's a large uh, boardwalk uh, in front of us here. Um, that uh, was just filled with people. And basically about five minutes after the show, uh, we had stepped inside and we just started hearing um, what sounded like thumps and people yelling and screaming. So my son and I uh, ran out to the balcony to see what was going on. And this was, uh, unfortunately, it was a time right when this uh, white panel truck was going right across the area in front of us. And it was zigzagging. I'd say it was going about 25 to 30 miles an hour um, as it did so and just plummeting through. It, it looked like it was heading several people. Um, I can tell you right now, even as I look out in front of our area, I still see about um, 10 covered bodies that uh, they haven't even begun processing yet. Mm. I mean, it's just uh, horrible. And you're saying you now even can see that there are bodies they have been able to cover, but they haven't yet been able to move them or take them to the morgue or, or, or anything, Tony? Yeah, it, it was, it was um, I think it was a shock for everybody down there. In fact, you know, all day long we'd seen several law enforcement, uh, military, all through this whole area, the Promenade des Anglais. And, uh, but at this particular time, I think uh, they had either cleared to other locations or were doing some other sort of uh, maybe traffic enforcement or something because there was only a couple out here in this area in front of our place. And they, I mean, I think everyone was just in shock because there were the bodies that were hit and we, um, they were just uh, laying there and everyone was kind of running off in different directions. And I think I saw, I, I can't tell if it's an officer or not, um, uh, depending, you know, based on the uniform that I saw from this distance, but he, you know, he just looked confused as well. And I can only imagine, um, what he was going through at the time. So, so Tony, when you were when you were watching this, and you 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 say what you describe as a white panel truck, and you say it was zigzagging, um, was it? Could you tell? Was it accelerating? I mean, certainly they are now using the word attack. It's clear this was purposeful. But what did you see from the way it was moving, the way it was aiming? Uh, what did you see? Yeah, my first thought was, my gosh, this must be a drunk driver. I didn't, you know, think it was an act of terror initially. I just came out, saw people yelling, um, this truck driving kind of erratically, but as we watched it unfold, it, it was never, uh, it, it never, you know, came to a stop or anything, it just kept uh, kind of zigzagging, um, I wouldn't say it was accelerating per se, but it kept a um, fairly continuous speed as it kind of went through this crowd here. And and you were you are there right now with your with your fourteen year old son right both both were yeah. together during this. 
Yeah, well, my, me and my wife and my son are here. Uh, we, we had all stepped inside after the fireworks, and I think my, my wife had walked back to the bedroom. So my son and I were sitting here in the room that's right next to the patio, um, and that's when you know we heard the noises, and both my son and I just walked out. And uh, yeah, I wish he hadn't have seen it, but basically uh, we both came out and watched uh, this truck uh, basically go through people. And did you see the shooting? And it, it, we're, we're trying to understand at this point who was shooting at whom. You know, one eyewitness said yeah. the driver was shooting. Someone else uh, they said maybe not the driver. The driver was only shot out. Were you able to, to see anything to indicate that, Tony? So, no, we, we could hear the shooting, but just to give you an idea of where we're at, um, one of the famous landmarks here is the Negresco Hotel. We are just west of that, so closer in the direction of the airport here. So we're just west of that. I'm probably about um, 70 yards from that hotel. <clears throat> and uh, the panel truck had continued on. So the area when it went in front of us was actually on the boardwalk, so the sidewalk area where everyone should feel safe to walk. Um, and it just continued on that until it got to the front of the Negresco where there's kind of a pergola. And it was, um, it turned from there and went onto the street at that point. Mm -hmm. But the streets at that time were still flooded with uh, people, with pedestrians. So uh, it continued on past the Negresco Hotel. We lost sight of it at that point um, due to all the trees that are kind of lined in the middle of the roadway. And then we just heard uh, gunshots um, several seconds later. So. I couldn't tell you from where I'm at where that even ended up. And 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 Tony, b before you go, and I I know this is, is exhausting for you to have to relive what you're what you're watching, and 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 you're still looking down there at at people who have died who are still not taken to where they need to go. Um, how long did it did this happen? When you start start started to see that truck driving, the white panel truck, how long did it drive before this stopped? How far did it go? Well, I would say. Uh, from where we're at, it probably continued another maybe half a mile, and it had to have come from at least uh, a good half mile from the other direction, at least. All right. Well, Tony, I very much appreciate your time. Thank you so much for, for calling uh, calling in and speaking to us. Tony, as we said, American from San Diego, visiting Nice with his family. I want to go to our justice correspondent, Evan Perez. And Evan just heard what he said from his perspective, looking at this as a witness. It seemed that that truck uh, drove at least from where he could see, and it had already started hitting people at least half a mile, zigzagging, going, he thought, it seemed 25 to 30 miles an hour. And uh, as we hear about this horror and chaos, he's saying there are at least 10 people that he heard, uh, people who were, were murdered in this horrible attack. What are you learning? Well, Aaron, one of the things that the U.S. officials are doing is they're keeping an eye on uh, social media, especially uh, of these extremists uh, online who are celebrating uh, what happened in Nice. We've already seen some of those tweets and, and other postings on social media. Uh, it's not clear whether or not uh, this is an ISIS attack or, or uh, some other group, but certainly ISIS is the first uh, suspect, the first group that uh, comes to mind, certainly for U.S. officials as they watch this. And obviously France has a tremendous tremendous problem. They, uh, we know we've obviously with the terrorist attack in, uh, in Paris and also the, uh, the Charlie Hebdo attack, but also just uh, this month, just, in, just last week, was the completion of the month-long uh, Euro 2016 soccer tournament, which, during which time there was this very heightened concern about a terrorist attack in France. They managed to get through without any major incidents, uh, but certainly Bastille Day, a very symbol symbolic day, was a day that was a, a of, of big concern and if you hear some of the witnesses that we've talked to they say that they saw very heavily armed police there this was a promenade that was cordoned off so this truck would have had to go through some kind of barricade perhaps to be able to get into this promenade and then mow down these people obviously the death toll is very high right now US officials are working to see if there's any information that they can collect there's a lot of collection of, of communications that happens especially in that region that the US intelligence agencies are now going through 
Aaron, just in case that there might be any clues as to what might have been coming. Perhaps someone might have sent something saying that they were about to carry out an attack. These are the types of things that these uh, U.S. analysts are doing, and they're going to spend their whole night doing tonight, Aaron. All right, Evan, thank you very much. Evan, staying with us as he's on the phone with his sources. He'll be back with us momentarily. I want to bring now in our intelligence security analyst, CIA operative Bob Baer, CNN law enforcement analyst, former assistant director for investigations with the U.S. Marshals, Art, Art Roderick, also with me. Bob Baer, Bastille Day. This is the July 4th of France, uh, one of the biggest holidays of the year. We now know at least 73 people have been slaughtered in this attack. Is there any doubt in your mind this was a terror attack? Oh, I think almost definitely. It's rare these personal attacks occur in Paris, especially when we consider it's the 14th of July. A machine gun was used, mass slaughter. France was under high alert. Uh, the, the head of the Bataclan attack um, his, is, is at loose. Uh, you know, so many things that suggest the Islamic State. Um, you know, we're going to find out later from the French. But right now, if I had to make a guess, it would be the Islamic State. And Art, I want to show everyone what we have just gotten in here. Um, we're going to show you. It is graphic and it is disturbing, but we were just hearing a witness talk about this who saw this. This is the truck actually plowing through the crowd. You can see how many people are there. Um, you can see how crowded and densely packed those streets are and that truck going through. Uh, Tony Molina just described that a witness, Art, as he, that truck going 25, 30 miles an hour. It makes you sort of choke up to watch how fast it seems to be going through this crowd of people. Um, Art, what, what is your sense of, of what you think just happened here? Well, I, I agree with Bob. I mean, I know the French government hasn't officially come out and called it a terror attack, but it seems like all the earmarks are there. The thing that struck me when I first heard about this is the is that this particular attack doesn't seem to be that very sophisticated as we saw with Charlie Hebdo, as we saw with the Paris attacks, as we saw with the Belgium attacks. And what I mean by that is it, there wasn't multiple people involved that we know of right now. I mean, we have one driver of a vehicle that was neutralized. But, you know, we, we do have an automatic weapon, it appears. Um, but we don't, have a, we don't have other conspirators that were with him in the vehicle. There's no explosives. Uh, this could have been either inspired or directed. I, I'm thinking more along the lines of a lone wolf type incident who just had a target of opportunity here. Yep. And when you see that van moving through there, that's like a small tank. Um, and, you, and we saw the photos of the bullet holes in the front of it, what it took to stop that vehicle before the individual yeah. got out and engaged the police. And, and Paul Krukshank is also with me, our terror analyst. Paul, you, you and I have obviously been together in, in, in Paris, in Brussels. When you hear how Art describes this as a small tank driving through that crowd, um, that it took so many bullets for them to stop it. Obviously, as you see this truck moving here, this shows someone with... Uh, this, 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 clear intent. There is no question here that this is a drunk driver or anything like that. That at this point seems to be a ridiculous proposition. Uh, clear intent, uh, Aaron, um, mowing people down, plowing through them with this truck um, for a distance um, up to, uh, according to some reports, two kilometers according, uh, along this uh, boardwalk. Uh, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the French police responding by killing the, the truck driver, clearly believing uh, that this was uh, not just a, a runaway truck, but, a, but an actual attack uh, that was taking place. Um, uh, one of the top leaders of ISIS, Abu Muhammad al-Adnani, uh, has called on ISIS followers uh, in the West, also in France, uh, to run people over uh, with their car. He first made that call in September 2014, and just a few weeks later, uh, there was an attack in Canada, in Quebec, uh, where a, 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 an extremist who was inspired by ISIS right. uh, rammed his car into a, a Canadian soldiers, killing uh, one uh, in, in a terrible attack uh, in Canada. But this on a much larger scale. Uh, the symbolism of the day, the fact this is the French National Day, July 14, Bastille Day, um, makes one think uh, that this could well be uh, terrorism, as well as all the details we're hearing uh, from eyewitnesses pouring uh, in this evening. All right, all of you, uh, please stay with me.